हरि ओम हरि ओम हरि ओम हेलो माय फ्रेंड्स as we are blessed now with beautiful weather we are out in the garden but i'm still in zurich in the same place <clears throat> we'll have a bit sounds in between we are just near the church every quarter of an hour we will hear the church bell sometimes there may be a plane but so what <laughs> we are all intrinsically free we have never been bound this bondage and liberation is something we are creating in the mind and yet as long as that identification is there it feels like one is in bondage it feels like one has to behave in a certain way in order to adjust this is also true on the relative level but we can also much more than most of the people think learn to do what we really profoundly want to do it doesn't mean that we should give way to any little pleasure that comes along <laughs> that is not near necessarily profoundly what we want to do there's there is only one single restriction as long as we are not not hurting others as long as we are not hurting others we have the freedom to do what we really from our heart want to do instead of what we have been used to instead of what we have been forced to instead of what all the conditioning compels us to do let this external manifestation be a wonderful expression of our true self for the self the question of freedom or bondage doesn't even arise it simply is <laughs> and so it's also about the external situation there is a lot from many people a lot of talk that people should come together should do something about the situation because they are not happy what is happening and i can understand <laughs> but actually those powers who try to be totally in control they can only control as long as we are playing alone and it's not by violence it's not by doing terrible things that is changing it's changing when we be, wake up to our own free nature <laughs> and then we stop doing necessarily what we are told if it goes against our grain and then everybody freely can decide and if people don't play along with it those powers who seem to be in control they can do anything anymore
if we do what really comes from the heart, then we feel fine with our life, with our circumstances, because it's natural to feel fine. And the more we feel like this, the more we just help everybody around. <clears throat> it's not that we have to adjust all the time, be afraid, well, am I doing the right thing? Am I doing the wrong thing? Just don't hurt unnecessarily. In this world, hurt cannot be completely avoided. It is constructed like this, but we can learn to be in harmony and not hurt unnecessarily. And if people are not happy, if we are doing what is natural, then it's not that we are hurting them, they are hurting themselves because they have expectations and we don't, cannot necessarily fulfill them all the time. Naturally, it is also nice in a family, in a group, in a community to behave in such a way that others are happy. And that's part of which something that comes naturally. But within that framework, we still always have the possibility to let our own beauty shine, to let our own creativity come out, to do that which we feel that makes sense. It's beautiful, it's fulfilling to express the inner selves through our actions. The more people live like this, the more the climate around the planet will start to change. The earth in itself is changing. The earth in Herzog is changing. <laughs> and the minds will gradually be influenced the more we are opening up to that, to be true to ourselves, to more we contribute to a smooth process of a gradual change of energy and the external circumstances will start to adjust all by themselves. All right, my friends, I stop now just talking, talking and invite anybody who wants to come in, please come in. Are we, let me see, 24 people. Is there anybody who is ready to come in? Please come. Hello, Werner. Hello, Lutz. Ja. <clears throat> I want to ask something about going beyond the mind. Yes. All the, or almost all the spiritual teachers say the kind of identification with the mind is the root of not being aware of something which is beyond the mind. Mm -hmm. And how do we go beyond the mind? Um, in my own experience so far, I have 
experiences going beyond the mind induced by other teachers who transmit somehow their, their energy and in a way my own energy um, synchronizes with them or gets so much affected my, my, my whole identification, my, my whole way, what I think I am for some uh, short moment it's kind of overpowered by this other energy from coming from the teacher and I experience myself totally different yeah. and it's very liberating and it's very wonderful yes. but the problem is that it's just for a rather short moment or for, yeah, for, for some time at least and then somehow everything goes back to normal and I'm back the, the old loots and uh, I'm wondering what happened or um, how can I um, do it myself because actually this teacher was kind of influencing my energy system and my whole idea of what I am in such a way that for a short moment I, I realized, oops, there's something totally different. I, I, I have been dreaming. I'm, I'm actually free. I'm joyous. I'm wow. Mm -hmm. And uh, the but the wow factor goes away after <laughs> the wow <laughs> factor. <laughs> so, um. And I feel to a sm smaller extent, I can go in this direction of kind of making it myself by focusing on the image of the teacher or kind of just remembering the, the moment where it happened yeah. with, with this particular teacher. It seems to be uh, somehow stored in my memory in, in such a way that if I refocus again on it, I get something from it. But it's it's happening at times, at other times it's, it's, it's not happening. Yeah. And um, by focusing on the image, on, on the particular teacher where I had uh, contact with, um, it also happens to some smaller um, extent. It is, it is not as vivid, it is not as, as strong, but still there's something about focusing on the image of the teacher and kind of, kind of going beyond the mind or realigning myself or something in this direction is, is, is happening. In your teaching, you say, Relax, um, focus on, on, on some place in you uh, where, where you can kind of feel at home and just be still. Is, is, that, uh, now, is that correctly? Uh, you can that, say so. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so so why you are, I mean, if, if i doing so, something also something nice and is happening. But it's never, it's never that sparky like mm. this interaction uh, with various teachers I, I had in, in the past. Yes. So can you say something about this? Why, why you are um, advising us to sort of daring to to address our inner teacher directly without the help of an outer teacher mm. well first of all there's absolutely nothing wrong with an outer teacher <laughs> but still even if you are if you are with an outer teacher ultimately we have to do the job ourselves <laughs> when you get an experience like you described then it's an encouragement. But if that is given too often, 
then people tend to become lazy and don't want to do the job by themselves anymore. <laughs> and then, uh, in a way, a new dependence is rising from that. How to go beyond the mind? The fact is, you are beyond the mind. You have never been not beyond the mind. You are here now, much more than the person you think you are. And when I say you just come to the present, you breathe and relax, then somehow the attention has the chance to become more and more aware, ah, it is already there. It's not that I have to go beyond the mind, I just have to stop being so obsessed with all the stuff that I'm thinking and feeling and identifying with it. And even if you have experiences like this with, uh, with teachers, that they induce an experience in you, uh, it's an encouragement, but the old habit is still there. The encouragement is there that you have a stronger conviction. Yes, it's true. There is more to me than what I thought. I'm not this person. But still the habitual person is there and it goes away. The wow experience <laughs> goes away. And there you are back in the old personality just out of habit. And that habit usually is gradually reducing. And it's gradually reducing by doing just something in the way that I'm talking about. You can also do it in different ways. I'm often talking about center, brief, relax. That's just my favorite way of going about it. So other people may do the same thing by repeating a mantra <laughs> and gradually, gradually thinking deeper. Others may do just a continuous self-inquiry who is feeling, who is thinking, who is doing this to detach from that mental obsession. But somehow or other, we don't get around of doing the job. Even if we get inspiring experiences induced by the energy from somebody, then that uh, we can accept that. Thank you very much for that inspiration. But then there I'm back doing my job. <laughs> That's what this world is for. We came for that. In course of the process, something very precious is happening. The being essentially remaining the same is getting enriched through the whole process, through that whole experience. From the personal perspective, we may not appreciate it always, but still it is happening. So, lots, I think, you don't get around doing your own homework. <laughs> Except whether it's being induced by somebody or whether it's coming out of the blue that you have such an expansive experience and you become aware, oh, there is so much more to what I am than what I'm usually aware of. But then when it's disappearing, when it's again not there, then accept, okay, here I am. And from this Hello. perspective, um, Daniel and Bea, please turn off your microphone. Come on, Sam. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, I uh, Daniel, Daniel, please Hi. turn off your microphone. You are interfering. Can, can you hear? Yes, he, he turned it off. Oh, okay. <laughs> then when, when that experience, no matter where it's coming from, goes again, then just instead of feeling sad that it's gone, keep the attitude, thank you very much for that inspiration, for that moment of grace. And here I am. And from that perspective, you connect as good as you can. Somehow or other, in one way or another, you are just not spared that part of it. 
see. But if we, do, if we learn to go about it playfully instead of with a certain reluctance thinking it could be given so easily, <laughs> so why should I do my job? <laughs> Because I know that feeling. I had for a long time that feeling, thinking that oh, I could just give it and why should I <laughs> work? Then I just hurt myself and blocked myself until I learned to go about it willingly. And then it started to become easier. And then comes the moment where it stops looking like a heavy job and it becomes play. You are beyond the mind, here, now. It's not that you have to go beyond the mind. You are creating the mind, recreating the mind, being attached to it. And out of habit, it feels so difficult to let go. And so it's a gradual thing that we are loosening up that attachment. And sometimes it snaps. And there you are. But then out of habit, it comes back again. And there you go about it again, gradually, gently, detaching. But if we continue, there will come the moment where it simply snaps. And then no matter what is happening, that overwhelmment, that being overwhelmed by the circumstances, by this relative reality, simply stops. And one can, in a joyful way, observe it and play a role in it. Okay. Shall we leave it at that? Or do you want to say something more about No, I think it's, 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 it's good. Thank you. <laughs> you are welcome. Hario, Hario, Hario. <clears throat> Is there anybody else who would like to come in? Please come. Twenty-seven people. Nobody wants to talk. Oh. Ah, there is somebody. Oh, hello, Moksha. But uh, again, I don't hear you. It happened before. I don't know what you did after that, but I can see you. I can see that you talk, but I don't hear a word. <laughs> <laughs> No, still not. <laughs> I see that you have the microphone on in Zoom. Okay. Ah, now I heard you. Yes, you hear yes. me? Yes, now I hear okay. you. <laughs> I don't know what I did, but... <laughs> something happened. <laughs> yes, yeah, something hear you. happened. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 it fits to what you were just talking with Lutz, I guess. This morning I wake up and they came, I have to this to do this and that. Yes. And then, then suddenly I became aware that uh, that is just an idea. Yeah. You don't have to do anything. But this is already in mind. You have to do this. And normally I believe it. Yeah. And uh, when this happened this morning, it became totally light in my head. Like, uh, yeah, I don't know, totally light. And it is still more or less there. Yeah. That we are so in the mind without, we don't see it, right? Yes. 
and, and if it is what Lut said, beyond the mind, it is just, if we see that it's just an idea and not a reality, it, right. then it's easy, right? Yes. It has become so habitual that we think this is normal. This is natural. But actually, it's only habitual. <laughs> the habit is so strong that we think that's the natural state that's the normal state after all that's being human <laughs> but it need not be like that right uh, again i don't hear you oh uh, when you come forward then i hear you ah then i have to okay <laughs> then that's just okay yeah, it was just a simple thing. I thought I go in the cold water with somebody. And yes. there came the idea, I have to do that. Yes. And I said, I have to do that? I don't have to do anything. And then it was just click. And then, then I did it. It was just a nice thing. But the idea, always the idea, I have to do something. Yeah. This is a mind thing. Right. So it's, a, it's for many people, it's good that we stop thinking in these terms just as a reminder, instead of always thinking, I have to do this, I must do this, learn to think, I can do this, I'm allowed to do this, I have the, have the opportunity to do this, instead of I must, I have to, I, <laughs> that changes already the mood. Incredible, and that you see, oh, it's just a, a thought that I have to do things. Yeah. And also, then the thought, I don't have to do this. It's also just a thought. Yes. No. And then we can see what happens, right? I mean, in one way or other, we have to spend the time. We have, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> we have to do something. Right. But uh, it, we can do that in a playful mood with the feeling that this uh, would I feel like expressing. And then it's not a burden, then it's all right. And of course, in our daily life, day-to-day -day life, there may be some routine. So what? If we don't resist against it, then even the most simple banal routine can be a joyous moment. Because you can relax in it. And even if we do manual work, of which we are not too much keen, <laughs> If, it, if we overcome that sense of resistance that may come along with it, then that very overcoming the resistance and accepting and being totally okay. I'm doing this because the, in that way I'm expressing my joy of life. Then it brings you deep and it brings a lot with it. Do you, hear, do you hear the church? Yes. <laughs> very, uh, very fitting. <laughs> yeah, this sentence I have to, it is just an idea. But if it's um, unaware and you have the whole time in the system, uh, the feeling I have to, then nothing is, is joyful. Yeah, then uh, everything I... looks like a burden. Yeah. yeah, and it's exactly the opposite what you're talking about. We can do it playfully. Right. Just, yeah, and this is nice if, if it was uh, really a, a nice happening. Uh, I don't have to, you know, and, and in this system of mine is a lot of I have to. Even yes. by nice things, I have to go to, to the sauna. And then, yes. it is, then it's not so playful anymore. Yeah. But you see, oh, I don't have to do anything. And, and then it happens. And then it's, yeah, it's playful. Life becomes playful. Right. Yeah. But we can attach it, right? As you said, we can at it, attach it to anything. Then I even have to go now for recreation. <laughs> yes, I had it. I had it. Stress yeah. to go to. I have to go to the sauna to relax. I have to. And yeah. then I found myself in stress going there. Yes. <laughs> totally nuts, you know. <laughs> yeah. So it's better not to create the stress in the beginning, yeah? Right. <laughs> right. And then you can or cannot go to the sauna <laughs> as you feel like. <laughs> and, yeah. It's yeah. Just, yeah, then it becomes playful, right? Then yeah. life becomes really, uh, yeah, playful, nice. It's all a matter of attitude, of perspective. But the attitude and the perspective is so much influenced by 
by our conditioning, by our habits, that it needs a bit work to just become more and more aware how much we are just pushed by that and then learn not to do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, beautiful. Hmm. Yeah, That's thank nice. you, Werner. Hari Om. You're welcome. Hari Om. Hari Om. Wish you well. Hari Om. <laughs> Is there anybody else who would like to come in? You're welcome to come. Hello, Ben. Hario. Hario. <laughs> I would like to just add a question to what you just talked about. This yeah. topic of um, we don't have to do anything, yet we have time to spend and therefore we are here to somehow do something. Yes. Um, how to how to check in with ourselves if we're if somehow if there is such a thing as a better thing to do than another or the right thing to do, how can we how can we know we're doing the right thing, and how can we cultivate the that awareness of of knowing where our doing comes from, I guess. Yeah. You know that you are doing the right thing when you feel from deep down, it's okay what you are doing. But actually we are too much worried most of the time whether we are doing the right thing or not the right thing. Most of the time, it's not that important whether we are doing this or whether we are doing that. It's much more important that we do it with the proper attitude. <clears throat> so, especially once one has, is on the spiritual path and wants to do the right thing and uh, not want to make mistake, then often there is a fear, oh, if I make a mistake, it will draw me back. I have to work more, it takes longer. Sometimes it's very important that you decide, go this way, that go that way. But most of the time, it's not that very important. And we give too much importance, whether it's the right thing, then it's still me, me, I as a person want to be perfect. <laughs> Do that which spontaneously comes. Nothing wrong with being reasonable. Nothing wrong in a situation. You see different possibilities. You evaluate them. You think about them reasonably. But then listen to your heart. Whether you are being drawn more this way or that way. And if it's clear, then you go that way. And once you decide, then you just go full-heartedly. And don't waste your time and energy always thinking, maybe I should have done the other things. <laughs> we, are, we are losing so much energy, worrying maybe it was not a good decision. Then even if we down the road become aware, uh oh, it was not such a happy decision that I made. It may not have been the best solution what I did. So what? You did it fully with your heart. Learn from the experience and there you are you collect yourself and there you are richer and wiser for the experience. If you have big decisions to make and you are not clear, if you don't have to make that decision right now, you can decide now, I just let it hang. I'm not deciding now. And often it's crystallizing by itself. And if the point comes where you have to decide, then listen to your heart. And if you feel there are contradictory voices, then do that which makes the most amount of sense for you in that moment. And once you decide, you go. And you leave what you have to leave. And sometimes... It's unhappy what we decide, but it's not really a mistake. 
they are richer for the experience. I would call a mistake only when we already from ex uh, repeated experience know if I'm going down that road, I'm going to hurt myself unnecessarily. And in spite of that, I'm doing it again there. We can call a mistake. Everything else you can call, it's an experience to learn, to become wiser. If we look back in our life, most of what we have learned is by trial and error and making mistakes and learning from them. So the, those mistakes are not really mistakes. So we don't have to so much be worried whether I'm doing the right thing. Just be here, be now, connect with yourself and then let your actions come out spontaneously. And nothing wrong with planning, but still there. Be in the present and not worry about the future and the worry about whether it's right or wrong. And then you are doing the right thing. And many times you learn something and the next time you wouldn't uh, make the same decision. So what? <laughs> Here, now, you are free. You are complete. The more you connect with this timeless presence, the more your actions will just flow out of you naturally. And they will be beautiful expressions of your inner self. But I know in day-to-day -day life on this relative level, we have to make decisions. And then we make decisions. Without taking ourselves as a person so serious. Without taking the circumstances so serious. Without taking so serious whether everybody will like it or not, what I'm doing. What kind of feedback I'm going to get from the people. <laughs> feedback gives a momentary pleasure if it's nice and it gives a lot of annoyance if it's not nice. But whether you are at peace with yourself that makes something very different. Then you can relax. And the more you relax, the more you are in touch with yourself. That sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. Shall we leave it at that? Um, yeah, that sounds good. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Mario. Mario. I, ha I have a few people with me here at the like I asked you from ah, yes. the, from the teacher course. The teacher course, yes, exactly. Yes. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you can see there's a few people around. So... Yes, now I see. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe if they maybe they will pop in at some point. You are welcome. <laughs> Anytime. Mario. 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 <clears throat> All right. If there is anybody else who would like to come, please come. Hello, Werner. Hello, Nelly. <laughs> I listened to, to this uh, conversation and I see this is very familiar for me about what I should do, what I don't should do. Yeah. Uh, yes, I found it in myself that sometimes I have some regime and I try to follow it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I see that even pleasant things, um, my, man, my mind sticks to them very, very strong, like yoga, for example, and I... Uh, and it reminds me so strongly, you should do yoga, you should do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, I like it, but when it uh, always uh, reminds me so often, <laughs> mm -hmm. or maybe I don't have enough time for it, it I feel this force and I uh, feel resistance. I, mm. yes, and the, about other things, I feel it when I. Uh, this strong uh, inner voice inside that I should do this or that. 
uh, and and I often just try to let go of it at all. Just say that I I don't shoot. I I, I don't shoot to do anymore anything like this. And sometimes just let go for a while, and then it it comes natural and naturally that I just do it. Oh, I I. I began want to do it <laughs> again, <laughs> but this, these things are so strong. I, yes. I watch them, yeah. Right, and you have the full right to change your program, but then we have to be also alert. It can be also a trick of the mind. It's not that it's not really uh, an inner conviction. For example, that you stop practicing your yoga, but it's just a momentarily uh, superficial laziness mm -hmm. that says, okay, uh, and gives arguments that you don't do. I'm not saying you have to now stick to your program of yoga <laughs> forever mm -hmm. and ever. You have the right to reduce in periods when you don't feel so much like it and have less time and increase when you really are enthusiastic about it and you have time. There is on the physical level comes often springs up a little bit of resistance. Even for things that we like to do that the, at the moment there comes uh, a momentary laziness and we have to give a little push. But even that push we can learn to accept and then it's not a heavy thing, then it's not a bad thing, then even that push becomes playful. That's part mm -hmm. of living in a physical body in this world. Because there's a lot of teaching, you have to be effortless. And you, in your true nature, you are effortless. But on the physical level, we don't get around effort. Physical life implies effort all the time. Every morning we have to somehow get up again and start that stuff. <laughs> Everything needs a little effort. <clears throat> but we can learn not to resist and then we happily make that effort. Like somebody who goes swimming as a relaxation. It's an effort and still they do it. But still there is a little effort involved to, involved to go and in the swimming by itself. <laughs> and yet it feels like relaxing. So To do that what one really profoundly feels doesn't necessarily not necessarily mean that we just give way to every whim that goes through the mind. But when you see that voice that tells you I should I should do yoga, then you can maybe replace it. No, I'm happy to do yoga. <laughs> not I should do yoga. <laughs> I'm going to you do yoga. Seriously, happily, playfully. Yeah. But as I said, you once you have a routine, that doesn't mean you have to strictly, no matter what, hold on to it, on and on and on and on. It can be a bit dynamic, but still a certain regularity is helpful. Yeah, 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 I agree a bit, <laughs> yes. It's more that we can change the attitude of that I have to, I have to, than change the program all the time. <laughs> because if we give way, just do whatever the comes up in the mind, then it goes on like this all the time. Oh no, I don't feel like this, then I'm spontaneous, I'm not doing it. <laughs> 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 then, okay, there comes the mental resistance, but then I don't resist against the fact that that resistance comes for a moment, but you can replace the attitude. Oh, no, I'm joyously going to do that now. Yeah, the mood is very important. Just 
to say I choose it, not to, I should, I choose yes. to do it. Yeah. I choose to do it. I'm, I can do it. I like to do it. I like I'm allowed it. to do it. <laughs> <laughs> you are still in your retreat, huh? or is that I'm, over? I try to be in my retreat, but I see it. <laughs> and then uh, it's more, um, don't look like retreat <laughs> as I planned it. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, a lot of um, things happened and yeah. my, my mother got feel uh, and uh, yeah, I yeah. yes and I um, I ring her I call her and uh, yesterday I went to see her yeah. so uh, yes so I decided to of course I included this um, um, this situation uh, in my in my retreat, <laughs> yeah. I, yes, I, I try not to uh, speak much with other people, but uh, but I of course in co in connection with my mother, yeah. I support her. Yes, and it's it's necessary. Right, and when yeah. you feel it's right, then it's also right. And from the beginning, you didn't make uh, a promise that uh, you. Keep it now up like in a Cuenca <laughs> Vipassana <laughs> retreat. <laughs> no, but you do no. it in a lighter way at all. Huh? Yes, but uh, I, I, in the beginning, I wanted to be more strict. Yeah. I, I wanted, I feel uh, this desire inside myself. I just feel, felt this. Um, uh, that it's necessary for me. I, I wanted to be in silence. And I was even, I was jealous about uh, my retreat. <laughs> I was afraid that uh, my father will call me often because he really needed something. Uh, it, um, so it, uh, how to say, <laughs> it, so the circumstances, um, arranged like this way uh, that uh, even in this exactly in this time my father had to go to, to another country and he needed some uh, help from me and I, I was afraid that he often <laughs> distract me <laughs> from my <laughs> retreat. <laughs> I was very jealous about it <laughs> but uh, five first days nobody called me and I was very happy mm -hmm. but after that uh, one after another, my father, my daughter, my mother, my cousin <laughs> began <laughs> a little. Um, Anyhow, topic. it's not something that you did because you didn't want to be sincere. So you can as well accept, okay, if it's that way, then still you have your special period and accept that there are distractions for a moment, you give the attention there and try to keep up your connection as good as you can. And the moment it's gone, it's gone and you don't regret, oh, 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 got me again, I was again busy, so what? Then you come back and then you are still in retreat. <laughs> yeah, I, I accepted this, that this happens. Yes. I, I even was uh, surprised that I, rather easy accepted it because in the yeah. beginning I was very strict yeah but now I say yes I uh, got the situation I deal with it and then let it go and went yeah. uh, go went on my practices and being in silence as, as good as I can and uh, so it, it's uh, it's nothing wrong with it I see it easy yes, yes I feel relaxed inside just like it is. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Very good. Continue like this. <laughs> Thank you, Werner. Thank Shall you we leave it at that? Yes, yes. Hurry home. Hurry home. Hurry home. Hello, Anna. Uh, hello, Shreya. Uh, Shreya, yeah. Yes. 
I might first say I've always been a should person. A should <laughs> person. I should, 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 should do this, this should, should do that. that. Yeah. And you're creating so much tension for yourself and making things so much more difficult. Yes. But I think I've relaxed a little bit more over yeah. time. <laughs> That's good but, news. Um, <laughs> I'd like to um, delve a little bit more into this idea of resistance. Yeah. Um, because... You know, uh, I definitely feel I experience this resistance. It's mental. It's a mental resistance. And I yeah. appreciate what you've been saying, that you choose to do something and that that approach. But still, sometimes, you know, there's things that you know are good for you to do your practice now. And somehow you postpone it or, you know, there's things that are good for you, but still you go and spend your time doing something else. There's like this, this resistance sometimes. Yeah. And... Yeah, so I was just wondering about that. It's I, I suppose we need to relax, you know, let, relax, let go. But mm. there, it's like you actually at that time you need effort. Like you started to talk a little bit about the, the effort. Yeah. Sometimes at that point you need the effort to direct you in the right direction. I don't know. Right. <clears throat> when we start to be conscious and go on the way, then there is behind that, there is that longing for freedom because we know deep down that's our natural way of existing. And then there is that habitual way of existing identified with a person that we experience our life totally as a person from the perspective of that person. But then once you start to go deeper, then naturally there comes a lot of resistance because the old habit doesn't want to give up so easily. That suddenly comes the fear. Hey, uh, if I let go, all my things that I'm holding on to, that with which I'm defining myself, then uh, what's left? Suddenly it's the fear of the unknown, of not more having the feeling of being in control on top of the situation. And so from that, from there comes a lot of resistance when we are on the way, doing regularly our practice, doing this to, uh, that we feel is helpful, then often comes the block and say, no, 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 it's not really helping. No, no, it's not necessary. Could do something else. <laughs> Then it's good. Then it's good to not listen to that. That doesn't mean we have to force ourselves to a heavy thing, on and on and on. There should be a joyousness in it. Otherwise, we cannot continue. But then, everybody has to find their own balance between not torturing oneself and a little bit of self-discipline. <laughs> a little bit of self-discipline doesn't do any harm to anyone but uh, it's always a waiting and a fighting the balance and that's different for for every person what is healthy what is natural it changes over time too because in my case i think i was i well i don't think i definitely was more disciplined when i was younger yeah. Like I, I could be, I was very disciplined, but I think in there, there was a bit of too much of I should, or I have to. And there yeah. was like this stress uh, yeah. with it. And now sometimes like I still am in a way, but I sometimes feel I go more the other way and I'm maybe a bit too soft. <laughs> I, I don't know. And it's, um, it, it's true. As you said, it's a matter of finding the right balance but I, I suppose, yeah, I was wanting to get to the root of where the resistance comes from. I suppose it's, you said it, it's, it's your, your habit, you know, mm. like from the past. Yeah. If, we, if we go deeper slowly, then we start to push our limits where we have been functioning. As long as that identification with the person is, it's like consciousness is locked in a little bubble and it goes round and round and round in the same thing. And then starting to, in one way or another, come to the timelessness of the now and connect with 
your inner vastness, it's pushing the limits of that bubble and we want it. There is a nurture in everybody to, to be complete, to be happy, but then the mind will come and say, I, I, I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> I didn't really. Then the mind rather wants to somehow imagine that if we go on that spiritual path, I can remain that same person, just a bit more happy, a bit more powerful, a bit more instructed, but still be that me, me, while that I-ness in that me is borrowed from what you really are. And we have to let go of the identification with it. And we don't lose anything by doing so. And yet, out of habit, the mind is afraid that we are losing something. And from there comes invariably resistance time and again. But then you said you were very disciplined previous in your life, but then disciplined with the motivation to do be good, uh, to be good in your job, to do your proper thing, that you fit in the world, that you make maybe your career, that you get the proper feedback, that you achieve this, that you achieve that. And now the discipline is a different one. It's of learning to observe that we are falling back in the old trap and then bring the attention back again not because we want to achieve really something, simply because we want to get rid of everything that disturbs us from being natural. Yeah, I meant I used to be disciplined with my meditation practice and like lifestyle. In some ways, I'm softer now. Yeah, yeah. But, that um, is all right. <laughs> I was going to say something else, but I've forgotten what it is. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, no, no, I was listening to you and then... Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, that's what it was. It's. I think it's kind of like a bit of clinging. It's clinging to that old, some past part of ourselves, some... Uh, yeah, I can see that. It's like you're not... I'm not really letting go and really embracing the, the, the light, if you like. I'm still, you know, there, there's that part of you that still wants to hold on to the, the um, I suppose it's a kind of ignorance, just wanting right. to hold on to that. Yeah, and it's learning to let go. It will always sneak in again. Somehow the way we are functioning is there. And then we become spiritual, become uh, more sophisticated, mm -hmm. more refined. But then the old habit still will be there of I am I'm doing this and we create a new self-image, but it's still a self-image. It's a spiritual self-image and it's limiting like the not spiritual self-image. Maybe it's a little broader, but it's still limiting. But if you that sincerity of getting rid of that is there, then we become aware of it. And then we can work on that to let that go. And it will have the tendency to sneak in again in a subtler way. <laughs> but uh, somehow just that hope is there that maybe I can hold on to me, me personality, and then enjoy my spirituality, my spiritual achievement, but somehow it just doesn't work like that. It's not that I as a person has to achieve something that I have to become more, more aware that I'm not this person that I do like this, that I am. We are not losing anything. I am complete in myself. I am connected with all there is. I'm all one and not this little person, but the, that habit of the personality will sneak in subtler and subtler and subtler again and again. And then we just are, become aware of it and work on it and let it go. That's the way to go about it. Yeah, thanks. I think it's um, awareness. Awareness over time and 
So letting go is, is, is a, a really um, important part of it because it's like we, we are clinging to some, you know, some stuff from goes way back that we still haven't uh, sort of moved on from. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hannah. You're welcome. <laughs> Adio. Adio. Oh, yeah. Is there anybody else who would like to come straight away? You're welcome to come. This is the amazing part, what we just talked about. Consciousness naturally is expensive. What you are is not going to change. Essentially, you're what you are. That doesn't change. But the awareness of it, the experience of it, is unfolding, is expansive. And consciousness naturally is expansive if we just don't stand in the way, if we let it happen. And with that identification, with that self-image, we're creating that little bubble. And it's unnatural for consciousness to function in that little bubble, and it's painful. No wonder that people are not happy, that they are dissatisfied because it's not natural for consciousness to function like this. And that habit of doing so is so strong that even when we become aware, it is there, that's what we are doing. It's not so easy to simply give it up. So it needs a little bit homework <laughs> of again and again becoming aware. That's, as Shreya just said at the end, so it's awareness, right? It is becoming aware what we are doing. It's the first step. Without being aware what we are doing, it's very difficult to let go, to detach. For that, the practice helps. It gives insight. We're spending, while practicing, some time where we try to be not distracted. Distraction in the mind still will happen so much. Go out, go this, go after what happened before, <clears throat> what I'm going to do tomorrow, what they said yesterday, going round and round. But there is an increased intensity of self-awareness here now. And in that self-awareness, we are becoming more and more aware of the mechanisms. What we are doing, compelled by the forces of habit, by the conditioning, by the forces that are uh, on this manifestation, manifested world, on the, in this manifestation. To do things, that actually prevent us from being naturally expansive in our consciousness. But that habit is so strong that we have somehow fallen in love with that habit. <laughs> and even if we want to get rid of it, then somehow we are very skilled in sneaking in again subtler creating that spiritual person in subtle and subtle ways, but still me, <laughs> comparing me with the others. If we really are fed up with creating unnecessary suffering, then we becoming also aware of it. Oh, there I'm doing it again. Sneakier, subtler, 
but still it's that process of me and the others creating separation creating limitation hurting the natural tendency of consciousness to be expansive bringing the attention back to the present it relax makes us aware here now doing it again and again even if the tendency pulls away is deeper and deeper inside it's not that we have to go and look in the subconscious and analyze and dig sometimes when something comes strong some analysis is fine but just be here now at ease at peace and then what comes by itself and wants to disturb that then we can deal with it it needs courage to let go what we are holding on to because our self definition is hanging on to it and deep down in the subconscious not from the self not from your true being but in the subconscious that we have built up there is that fear if i'm letting go of those things i'm attached to of those mental mechanisms of that with which i am identifying with which i'm defining myself if i let go of that then it's dangerous and facing annihilation what's there only the illusion can be annihilated you are the i goes with all its identification and the i remains you are and you cannot possibly lose that so when the fear comes when the resistance comes it's good to become aware what is happening the mechanism of it and once that the awareness is that we can start to work on that to relax that to let that go and if it comes back subtle we do it again and if it comes back subtle we do it again that's the process that's the part we are asked to contribute and if we do that sincerely honestly then it's like all the good powers of manifestation are happy about it and support and encourage and help us doing so sometimes the help will may not be in the way we are expecting it that everything goes wonderfully and smoothly sometimes the help is also exactly the opposite that destiny will put obstacles in our way in order to confront them and by confronting them confronting more of our own personal resistance i know people who came to teachers and hoping once they are with teacher then everything in their life will go smoothly because the teacher will take care and adjust uh, and remove all the obstacles and after that everything will go so smoothly and harmoniously it doesn't work like that and sometimes uh, the, if, if that expectation is there people get very disappointed get angry at their teacher and go away bitter you are here to learn and this world is constructed in such a way that this learning process includes effort as long as we are not resisting against that effort that effort is no big deal it's playful it's funny and we can do it joyous joyously <laughs> Thank you.
It's not, the effort is not to reach something, to break through something, to gain something. We can make efforts like this. Gain this capacity, gain that capacity. Fine, if that interest in some things are there, nothing wrong. Making efforts to achieve, make these little achievements, but that effort that counts, that is liberating, is to have the courage to have an honest, good look at ourselves again and again and again and see what we are doing to prevent that naturalness and then learn not to do that. The effort is to Remind again and again, come back home, here now, and see what's going on. And then, the rest of it becomes easy. It is awareness that counts first. It is love also. Love for truth, love for the self, love for what is. The divine game manifesting in this way and that way. It is the force of life for them. The dynamic energy that makes moving everything. When we start on the level of the mind to observe, first, it's awareness. Then immediately it merges with love and with energy. Come back home to that well of consciousness, love and energy get rooted in that and then live your life play your role in this theater of this world joyously playfully getting richer for the experience from moment to moment becoming aware stronger more powerfully more expensively aware that you are that which makes the whole experience possible. Unborn, deadless, unattached, unconcerned. Joyously going through this story, being aware of this story, at the same time unaffected by it. All right, I stop talking again, <laughs> inviting somebody to come in, if you like. You're welcome. Hello. Hello. Liova. Ah, uh, Liova. <laughs> now, uh, since of last week, I'm now Lila Liora. I've added uh, another name for my name. Now we are Lila Liora. I've added this name after the session with you from two weeks ago. Good. <laughs> so, so much about playfulness. So I, I looked in the dictionary what playfulness is in Sanskrit and uh, it is Lila. And, my beloved teacher Lila in Israel is Lila. That can be sometimes it can be helpful to add a new name just as a reminder. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, yeah. It, it came from you know very deep place. Um, so I wanted to say um I feel it's very elusive, both 
letting go, I mean, it's elusive somehow to understand it both intellectually and um, yeah. letting go and being here and being here and now. Yes. Um, is, are two very elusive concepts or, or expressions or qualities, virtues, whatever. However, at the same time, I can say that for myself, since I've been sitting with you again in the last few weeks, after a long time, when I listened after to the recording, but I didn't actually come to the meeting, I'm hearing you saying the same thing, like some people have said today, maybe you said or something, I can't remember how you keep saying the same thing again and again and again. After all, it always comes to connect to yourself, love, energy, awareness, connect to yourself and be here and now. And also all the situation now in the world, the violence, the hatred, the fear, as we have also spoken here before. Yes. Somehow um, influences me to a very exact um, place with like somehow how I want to live my life now. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure I can say if I actually do understand more of what it means, what it actually means letting go or what it actually means and being here and now, but I can say that some um, virtues, I would say, or qualities um, such as generosity and expression of love and softness and accepting. And I live more comfortable with myself and others, which is very contradictory to what is actually happening now, but and yet. And I think I've said it before, I've never been so balanced emotionally as I am. And things happen also on the personal level. Uh, yesterday there was some crisis and I had to take care of it. Like, like my heart was beating really hard and it was a bit scary. Oops. I don't know whether you are hearing me somehow. Uh... <clears throat> I was kicked out from the Zoom room. And then when I came in, unfortunately, I didn't put on the recording. So a little of the satsang has been lost. In the last conversation, our Israeli friend, she had said that she feels the emotions coming stronger nowadays. But obviously she's more detached, so I pointed out to her, but you are more detached now, so it doesn't matter. And actually, if the emotions seem to come stronger, <clears throat> it need not necessarily be like this, because the more we become conscious, the more we are aware how strong the emotions are coming. But then she thought there is more detachment. Also, it's just because of getting older. And that is partly true and partly not true because it needs also consciousness. And then letting the time pass, and obviously getting older, 
is doing changes. But if people are not conscious, if, you, if they never stop having a good look at themselves, then getting older is not doing much. People can be very much on the same level, in the same space for a long time. And it is not necessarily getting relaxed with becoming older. But as we have built up our emotions, our habits, our conditionings in time, then when we start to have a good look at them, it's also a matter of time that they are disappearing. And so it seems it's just a natural pr process of aging. But it does happen only if that awareness is there. This is a quick summary of what happened in our conversation. There was a little more after that, but we leave it at that for today. Arion. Arion. Arion.